The results are in. The IRS has published the 2025 HDHP and HSA limits, and there's some big changes coming for employers and employees alike. Before we dive into what the changes are, we'll discuss briefly what an HDHP and HSA are, why they matter, and we'll show you a savings trick and how you can get even more money into your HSA for 2025. Stay tuned. Back in 2003, Congress authorized the health savings accounts, also known as the HSAs, for the first time ever. And the HSAs, the purpose of them is to help individuals save for health care expenses on a pre-tax basis. Now, it's been argued that the HSA is one of the most tax-efficient vehicles out there. So what do we mean by that, John? Well, to begin, contributions to the HSA from either you or your employer or both go in on a pre-tax basis and are exempt from federal income and FICA taxes. 48 states in the union do not tax contributions for HSAs. However, if you live in California or New Jersey, unfortunately, HSA contributions are not exempt from state income taxes. Money in the HSA earns interest tax-free and can be invested in a variety of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, as well as other investment options out there. And here's the kicker. If you happen to have a qualified healthcare expense, money from your HSA can be used to fund those qualified healthcare expenses with no tax consequences whatsoever. And the HSA has been deemed to have the triple tax advantage where money goes in tax-free, earns interest tax-free, and comes out for qualified healthcare expenses without any tax consequences whatsoever. Let's compare the HSA to the 401k. Similar to the HSA, money in the 401k goes in on a pre-tax basis, earns interest on a pre-tax basis. However, unlike the HSA, when you go to withdraw money, that money is subject to income taxes. And in addition, if you happen to take the money out before you're 59 and a half, you're subject to an additional penalty. For an HSA, as long as the money is used for a qualified healthcare expense, such as seeing a doctor or picking up a prescription, the money will always come out tax-free with no consequences to you whatsoever. One thing to note is if you use your HSA for cosmetic purposes, such as getting lip injections, that money would be considered taxable to you. Let's compare the HSA to the Roth IRA. With the Roth IRA, money goes in on a post-tax basis, but earns interest on any investment earnings tax-free, and any investment earnings can come out tax-free after the age of 59 and a half. Again, in this example, the HSA wins because with the HSA, as long as it's a qualified healthcare expense, money will always come out tax-free. Does the HSA sound too good to be true? Well, there are some strings attached associated with having an HSA and putting money into it. For 2025, in order to put money into an HSA, you need to have a deductible that's at least $1,650 if you're enrolling in single-only coverage or $3,300 if you happen to be enrolling yourself plus at least one other dependent onto your qualified health care plan. Your plan also needs to have an out-of-pocket maximum that's no more than $8,300 for single or $1,660 for family coverage. In addition, you can't be entitled to Medicare, meaning that you're enrolled in Medicare Part A, Medicaid, and you can't have any other low deductible coverage, including having a general purpose FSA or having access to your spouse's general purpose FSA or perhaps being enrolled in your spouse's PPO plan. Now let's talk about how much money you can put into your HSA for 2025. If you happen to be enrolled in single coverage with your high deductible health plan, you could put up to $4,300 into your HSA, including what your employer may contribute. If you happen to be enrolled in family coverage, you can contribute up to $8,550, again, including your employer contribution, if any, into the HSA. Now, here's an additional kicker. Let's say you're over the age of 55, you have a $1,000 catch-up contribution. So in that example, if you were over the age of 55, you could put in $9,550. But if you 
and your spouse are both over the age of 55 and you actually have separate HSA accounts, in total, your family can put in $10,550, which is the highest HSA limit ever. Now we wanna hear from you guys. Have you ever used an HSA? And if so, what was the overall experience like? Comment below.